next speaker, I hope he's getting there, uh, is Patrick Larry, also from Oregon State University. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so I'm Patrick Clary, another student of Jonathan Hurst at Oregon State. <coughs> so last year at Dynamic Walking, I uh, presented an approach to controlling bipedal locomotion over complex terrain by taking a uh, dynamically stable blind walking controller and combining it with a terrain-aware Monte Carlo planner. Since then, we've shown that this approach can be used to guide Cassie in 3D um, while, while it's using a basic walking controller to move around. But in order to push this further and do more interesting movements, uh, more complex terrain, we need a diverse library of controllers for Cassie that produce stable uh, dynamic movements, but do not necessarily individually need to be terrain aware. So that brings us to what I'm going to discuss today, which is uh, learning a library of policies for generating useful locomotion behavior on Cassie. Specifically, I'm looking at using stochastic policy gradient methods to optimize policies in simulation and then transfer them to hardware. Uh, so moving a policy from simulation to hardware is not exactly the most trivial task. So what we're doing to approach this problem is structure the policy in a way that facilitates good behavior while making flagrant misbehavior like uh, moving by vibrating across the floor at some ridiculous speed uh, much more difficult to even uh, happen. So the most important part of this is that uh, rather than having the learn policies output direct motor torques at the full real-time rate, we're looking at having them uh, output targets for a PD controller running at a much slower rate, something like 30 hertz versus 2,000. Um, another important thing is kind of curating the input data rather than just throwing everything in um, and making sure to remove any kind of input data that's probably not necessary and that differs significantly between uh, the simulation and hardware or just isn't reliable on hardware. And the final thing that we're trying with this approach um, that may or may not be necessary is to structure the policy similarly to the heuristic policies that we have run before on uh, Atreus and Cassie. Um, so as Jonathan Hurst stated in his talk on Tuesday, we believe that there is a set of uh, fundamental truths inherent to the dynamical phenomenon of legged locomotion. And so by encoding our best understanding of these truths into the structure of the policy, we expect that we can strongly bias the space of possible policies towards solutions that are effective at generating locomotion behaviors um, without overfitting to the vagaries of, part of some particular simulator. So to do this, we can take the broad structure and implement it in a way that's differentiable for our uh, learning methods and structured in a way that we know works. We can maybe do a rough tuning of it by hand. Um, but that still contains enough parameters to allow a very diverse set of stable behaviors um, to be learned. Um, so with modern deep learning, deep learning frameworks like PyTorch, uh, we can actually do horrible things like this pretty easily. So here's some footage. That was a graph of, uh, that, that was essentially the graph showing um, going from the inputs to the outputs. Each, each node in that is an operation, like addition, uh, something like that. Some of the leaf nodes on it are policies, or some of the parameters of the policy. So we can essentially take a very structured policy and uh, use it for deep learning using some of these new techniques, or new uh, you said frameworks. Framework -like something. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called PyTorch. We can discuss it more later. It's essentially some of the implementation. Um, so here's some footage from the training process. Uh, and in the next slide, I have some footage uh, just taken on Saturday um, of a learn policy running on hardware. And it actually works about as well as it does on, in simulation. So here it goes, taking a couple steps. So you might be wondering, uh, what the point of testing a policy like this on hardware might be. And the reason we even bothered to do so, and I guess take video of it, is uh, because getting to the point where the robot is moving and uh, not doing anything just totally crazy when it's on the rope like that, is uh, there, it requires a lot of infrastructure to be functioning correctly. So this was essentially a test of that. Um, we now have a setup that allows us to train policies using a tightly coupled simulator uh, where things like foot forces and the global position of the robot is available for use in reward functions. 
um, then test them on a loosely coupled simulator that basically just mimics the real-time system at the uh, communication level. And then once we have that working, we can kind of just throw it on the robot by changing the IP address that it's sending commands to. Um, if you go to the link on the postcard that uh, Jonathan was distributing earlier, you can uh, download most of this setup, minus the uh, physical robot, of course. And we've also been collaborating with uh, Michael Vandepan at the U University of British Columbia and his student, Zhao Ming, who's here at the conference. Uh, if you'd like to see footage of a learned walking controller for Cassie that actually functions correctly, then uh, you should watch his video later in this session and check out his poster. Um, we're, now that all of the infrastructure is in place, we're looking forward to uh, incorporating some aspects of their learning process and just testing some of their policies on the robot in the very near future. Um, so here's some acknowledgments, and I think we can open it for questions. So, uh, can, can you like explain how you like modeling the uh, swing-like swing trajectory based on different uh, full location, like these are full location. I didn't catch something in the middle, in the middle there. Uh, how we're modeling what exactly? Swing, swing leg trajectory. Oh, swing leg trajectories. So yeah. how we're modeling it is uh, based on like a by like a if it like desired traject desired full location is changing. How you like change your like swing leg trajectory? Do you mean how the how the policy generates the swing leg trajectories? Yes. Uh, so what we do is we have a couple of. Basically, in the structured policy, we have what turn we have some essentially trajectories that turn into swing leg trajectories. There's a lot of scaling going on um, and some feedback involved, but uh, the learning process can essentially shape how the uh, swing leg trajectory looks by changing some of these uh, parameters that affect this uh, trajectory. Okay, so it's like a function. It's, it's essentially like a function. And so as we make it more complex, um, we expect to make those into more, more like a universal function approximator. Um, but for now, they're fairly simple. OK, thanks. Maybe one more question while Ryan is setting up. Did you find that, or did you try training the whole thing end to end? Or were you pre-training parts of it and then putting them together? We've tried both. Um, so one thing we tried is uh, pre-training based on take, essentially taking some, uh, some policies that we'd just done by hand and pre-training a more complex network based on that. We've also tried tuning something roughly by hand and then training on that. And we've also tried randomized weights. Um, uh, at, it actually, at the moment, we haven't been able to distinguish between them. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's thank Patrick. Was that, was that one attached? Or...